Hello, friends. We now invite you to join us for the Animation Academy. Please welcome your sketch artist, Matthew DeWater. All right. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Animation Academy. Uh, welcome to the Epcot Festival of the Arts, and welcome to our 50th anniversary of uh, Walt Disney World. There's a lot of exciting stuff going on here uh, today. My name is Matt, and I will be your artist today. And so uh, I'm a character artist uh, for the Disney Creative Group, where we do product design and um, merchandise and special events and stuff. And so I love getting to come here and do uh, uh, events like this and, and teach a class. And so when they asked me uh, to teach some of the some of the Animation Academy classes, I, uh, I I've, I've really enjoyed getting to come here uh, to pick the characters. And we've done a huge variety of characters from classics and, and new films like Encanto to um, park, park characters like Orange Bird um, to Disney Afternoon characters like Darkwing Duck. Um, but today, I don't know if you guys know this, but today is actually the very last day of the Festival of the Arts, and this is the very last class for the Animation Academy. So I figured I know all oh, set. Um, it is set. And, uh, but, we're going to end it on a high note. I figured today we would wrap it all up with Epcot's very own mascot, the mascot of the Festival of the Arts, Figment himself. Yes! Yes, yes! Very good, very good. We got some Figment fans. Now, I, I, uh, I would guess some, for some of you in the audience today, Figment is like the end all be all, greatest character of all time. He's the entire reason for your existence. Um, and I know for some of you, Figment may be this anomaly that you've only seen since you got here today at Epcot, um, then you don't know who in the world he is. So, while we draw him today, we'll talk a little bit about Figment and who he is and what he represents and uh, why we're finishing with him. So I'll, uh, I'll sit down and get started here. Now, how many of you have done a class here before with the Animation Academy here or at the other parks? Okay, very good. And how many of you, this is your very, very first time doing anything like this? All right, we actually have a lot of newbies here for the, for the last class. That's awesome, awesome, very cool. So, this is, uh, here's Figment. There he is. Oh, look at him, so cute. He's got his little light bulb. He's got an idea. And uh, we will uh, we'll jump on in. So we're gonna, fin our, our finished product will look something like that. Okay, so I always like to bring reference um, for whatever I draw. Uh, I've drawn Figment so many times uh, over, the late, over the years, but it's still good to have reference, whether it's a model sheet or whether it's a, a drawing that I've done previously or a drawing that another artist has done, uh, just to, to have reference and have, uh, have something to work off of so that we can keep everything consistent. Now, let me see here. Let me sharpen my pencil. If you take a look at your pencils, uh, you will notice that you don't have an eraser. Uh, and so I always like to point that out. That doesn't mean that we aren't going to make any mistakes. Uh, I will probably make just as many mistakes as we go along as everybody else. And, uh, but what it does mean is that we want to draw lightly. Okay, so we don't want to uh, tear down on our paper and, and, uh, and have this big black line to start off because especially as we start, we're going to do guidelines to start off. And so we can just kind of uh, adjust as we go as long as we start lightly. Okay? So, if you've done this before, you know a lot of our characters start with a circle for the head, and Figment is no exception. So I'm going to start very lightly with a circle for the head. And mine's about the size of a baseball or so. Don't want to draw too big because we want to leave room for his, uh, his horns and his big, uh, big open, excited mouth. And very lightly, like I said, just a ball there. We'll take it step by step, and I'll go slow, so that everybody can um, keep up. We can all go together. Once we've got our ball, I'll do my guideline straight down the middle, and I'm gonna um, bring it down a little bit farther since it's got that big open mouth, um, just to help with with placement of everything and keeping keeping things more or less symmetrical. And I'll also do a guideline straight across the middle. Horizon, horizon line, excuse me. Okay. And before we start putting in any uh, sort of features, we'll just get the 
very basic shape of his head in, okay? So we're gonna put his cheeks and his, uh, his jaw in. And so if I start right up here at about, if I were to draw a line here, it'd be about 10 o'clock or so. His cheek comes out, way around, and comes down. You leave a little bit of room down below that circle. Okay, and it's just the same on the other side. It's basically a sideways U shape. Okay, and this is why we draw a light. Good example, I made this one a little bigger than, than that other side, so I'll just come in here and kind of bring that in some. And we'll come, if you picture this kind of coming straight down from that, uh, the side of the ball will be his, his jaw. It'll come down and go back up, and if it were to go straight back up into the other side of the ball. Okay, so there's this, that's going to be where his, his mouth opens up into. get the overall shape of his head there. All right, and we'll start putting in some of the basic features. Now we're still gonna go very lightly um, because we'll kind of define these features more as we go. But to start off, we'll get the eyes in there. And his eyes basically take up the entire, uh, the entire upper half of his, his face. And now we always like to think kind of in the round, as we say. We like to think of these characters as having dimension. So you'll notice I put my oval for the eye. It's, it's on the bottom, uh, it's on the horizon line there, and it comes just about all the way up to the top of that ball. But I've got it just slightly angled towards his forehead, right? And that just helps kind of give a bit of dimension uh, to the top of his head. It's, it's that eye is uh, wrapping around his, his head rather than straight up and down like, a, like Mickey is. We'll do the same on the other side. Leave a little bit of a gap between the two. Not as much as some other characters. His eyes are pretty close together. But they're nice and big. Just like the, the song says, if you know uh, the original song, says, Big yellow eyes. Okay. And once we've got our ovals for the whites of the eye, well, not the whites of the eyes, but the yellows of the eyes, I'll put his uh, put his pupils in. And so they're not right in the middle, but he's got these little beady pupils, and they kind of favor the inside. The lower half of, of that eye and the inside of the eye without actually touching the oval. Two little beady pupils. Okay. And we'll do a little bit to set these eyes back in his head. Okay, rather than just being these two flat ovals. I'm gonna come up here and give him a little bit of a, an upper lid. Okay, so I just come right up here and it, it's just a little thing, it's just subtle, but it comes a little bit above that circle and breaks, breaks the out, outer edge of that circle, just a little bit. Okay, and that just starts to add a little bit of dimension. So we'll do the same, kind of the same on the bottom here. And on the bottom I'm going to bring a little fold up into his eye and it comes right outside his eye. And this is his, if you, if you do a big giant smile, right, you'll feel your cheek pushing up towards your eye. And so we like to exaggerate that for cartoon characters. And you'll watch those old uh, Disney documentaries, the how, you know, making of Snow White or whatever, and you'll see the animators looking in a mirror, and, yeah, 
seeing what their face does uh, while they're making these crazy expressions. And so I'll add just another little <laughs> fold right in the corner of his eye there. It's really, he's got this big, big old smile. And it's pushing up the corners of his eyes. Okay, and I'll do the same on the other side. His cheek comes up. And just a little extra line for a fold in his skin. Like I said, we always like to think of these characters as being 3D, dimensional, even though it's a flat piece of paper. Thinking of them in the round helps with expressions, helps with making sure everything is on a model, the placement of everything. We've got his eyes. I'll let everybody kind of get caught up for a second. Um, now, Foot Figment, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you know and some of you may have no idea, Figment is, uh, he started off not quite with the opening of the park. It was actually a couple months later uh, in 1982. And, and actually, I think by the time his attraction opened, it may have been into 1983. Uh, but he, he's over at the Journey into Imagination attraction um, at the Imagination Pavilion over there by by uh, the land, by Soren and all of that over there. Um, it started off as the attraction was called Journey into Imagination, and it's gone through a few different uh, iterations over the years. It's currently called Journey into Your Imagination with Figment, I believe. And uh, it's it's a little bit of a different concept. Now it's you travel into your the um, five senses, I believe. Um, but back in the day, the classic Figment attraction was uh, literally a journey into your imagination, a physical journey into your imagination. So you would uh, you would go by uh, the Dreamfinder character, who was this uh, big kind of professor-esque, uh, bearded, jolly fellow, and uh, he came up with his his, uh, his figment of imagination. And so figment is literally that uh, physical embodiment of a figment of the imagination. And so you would go through the ride and travel through your imagination and how it works. And Figment kind of took on different roles. He had a bunch of different costumes. Um, and unfortunately, I only know the ride from YouTube videos uh, because it's changed. But I, I certainly can understand why it created uh, such a, a uh, kind of a cult following for a while until Figment started to become a little bit more mainstream here in the past five or ten years or so. Okay, so let's start with his nose. I'm going to start with the bridge of his nose. It's, it's just the top of his snout there. Right where the, the two lines intersect, you just draw a little curved line for the top of his snout. Once we have that, we're just going to do it one more time. Slightly longer line, just underneath it. And it's just a little fold of, of skin at the top of the snout. It's almost looking a little bit like Mr. Toad right now. We could go in a different direction here if we want. But we'll stick with Figment. So let's, do, let's get his, uh, his smile in place. And so, if you picture this, this bottom line that we just drew, if you picture this as the top of the snout going into his cheeks, it's gonna kinda curve around and it becomes his smile line. So check this line out. It doesn't actually connect. There's a curve line and then it would curve right up into the top of his snout. I leave a little bit of a break there. So it comes down, up, and that's his cheek. And if you look right here, his actual cheek there, you can see that cheek being pushed up right into his to his eye. That's where his cheeks are. Okay, so we've got his smile lines in there. Okay, and we've come to maybe the most uh, complicated line on Figment, the most complicated shape, so stick with me here a minute. I'll, I'll do the whole thing. 
um, and then you can kind of follow along. It's it's his his snout. He's got this really wavy bottom line of his the top of his snout. So it starts right in the corner where his uh, his cheek is being pushed up. It comes out of the circle. It curves back into the circle. Goes down past the circle. There's his big nose. And then it's the same on the other side. It goes back in the circle, curves up and around, back into the cheek. There's no real good way to describe that line other than to just take it one step at a time. Curves out. Way down for his big nose. Big, just a big U shape there for his nose. Curves back around for the side of his smile. That really helps with his uh, kind of zany appearance. Kind of wavy, squiggly line. Characters, animated characters, park characters, go through a lot of iterations um, in their development, and Figment definitely did. He uh, he started off. There was a, an attraction called Professor Marvel's Gallery of Illusion that was supposed to go into Disneyland, in California, um, at a at a new land they were working on called Discovery Bay. And the entire land never got made. Um, it was one of Imagineer Tony Baxter's kind of pet projects. And they had the whole thing kind of designed and worked out, and, and for whatever reasons, uh, it, it never happened. But as these things do, he kind of, you know, repurposed a lot of those ideas for things down the line. And so when Epcot came around, um, they decided to kind of repurpose Professor Marvel as the Dreamfinder. And he was, he was a very similar uh, character as Professor Marvel, and he became the Dreamfinder. Figment, when he was with Professor Marvel, he was actually a little green dragon. Um, and it was the, the sponsor of the, uh, of the Imagination Pavilion was Kodak, the, the photography company. Um, and Kodak said, well, uh, the color purple is actually one of our competitors' top colors. Uh, or, or, I'm sorry, the, the color green is one of our competitors' top colors. Can we change it to purple? And so, uh, as I understand it, it was Kodak's decision to turn Figment from a green little dragon into a purple dragon. So more you know. Okay, so I just did his bottom, uh, his bottom lip here, his smile. And it comes right off where the circle meets that, um, meets the top of the snout. Comes down and you just follow that jawline that we did. Comes right back up. Just another big U shape. Big old smile for sure. down horseshoes almost. One big one, one little one inside for his nostril. And they sit right on the edge of his nose in between his smile line and the top of his snout. There we go. Oh, he's really starting to look like Figma. <coughs> Okay. Come in here and just kind of define some of those lines that we started with, the ones I like. Bottom lip. I just 
do a little bit of an overlap there you see in the in the corner as that bottom lip is in front of the size of his cheeks. Okay. And then last thing for his face, I'm gonna put his his brows in there. So just above his eyes. Basically follow the curve of that eye. It comes off the circle, breaks up. It comes right back down into where his cheek comes back into his head. Okay. Just like that. A couple upside down U's. A lot of figment, it's just a lot of U's and, and J shapes. It's very curvy. Wavy. I'll just connect that in between using that circle. attraction itself is a ride. Um, but today also, over the years, uh, we've started using it more and more as the mascot for all of the festivals here at Epcot. So, uh, the Festival of the Arts here, the Food and Wine Festival, the Flower Garden Festival, um, even to an extent the holidays, uh, holidays around the world. And he, uh, he suits that role really, really well. Like I said, in the attraction, he takes on all these different chef uh, for, the, for the food and wine festival, he's a gardener for Flower and Garden, and he's even more than that. We've done him as an astronaut, we've, um, you know, he's, he's just had all, all kinds of roles over the years. We've done him as a knight, like a knight in shining armor. He's kind of the, the perfect um, the perfect character for that, being the you know physical embodiment of a figment of your imagination. Color in those eyes it really helps feel like figment. Okay, but he's missing one important thing. What it, what is it? Shout it out. His horns. So let's get his horns in there. So, um, now his horns are kind of this funny, elongated shape, uh, but what we want to think about is how they are going to go back in space from his head, right? They're not sticking out like this, right? They don't go like this. They, they go back in space. And so what we're going to do, we start up here kind of on top of his brow. And it's kind of a curved line that comes up and comes right back down into kind of towards the top of his cheek. Okay, we'll start with that. Very lightly still. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And now, like I said, we want to think about how these little bits are going back into space. And so right off the top, the sides of it are going to come down, not too far, and they kind of curve back around and under the front of that horn. Okay, so this is the front of his horn, and then it goes back into space like this. And the tip of it here is, is <laughs> Not a, it's not a hard angle, it's kind of a soft, soft corner. We very rarely have any of our um, hero characters or, or, you know, good characters. Very rarely have any hard angles, so we kind of keep everything 
soft and flowy. Okay, same thing on the other side. So once I have that shape, I can kind of darken up. I'm not going to darken that whole line there. I'm just going to do about halfway up. Because that shows how the front of that horn overlaps uh, the back. Okay, so once I've got the shape, I can come in here to find that. Okay, it's okay that we've got this kind of lighter line right here in the middle because we're actually going to come in here and do a couple more of those. A little indentations in his. is as a popcorn bucket. We love the figment popcorn bucket. Should have somebody go, what? <laughs> You'll see them, I'm sure, walking around. You'll see the figment popcorn bucket. Okay, let's put this back in here. Uh, this is maybe a little bit breaking uh, the rules of the character a little bit because his wings are actually a little further down and they're very small and in the back of his body. But I think just for the sake of getting something in there, I'm just going to draw two tiny wings as this moves. of the steer And this, of course, you don't have to do this sort of thing on your drawing if you don't want. You just kind of like to add a little personality to it. Come in here and put a rainbow behind them. Move the rainbows over at the Imagination Pavilion. And before we call it quits on him, I just kind of come in here and add a little bit of shading and tone, fill in his mouth. I'm not too, I'm not too worried about uh, coloring it in. I'm just kind of quickly laying down some tone where I like to have it. A little bit on the rainbow, maybe. Just to add a little bit of How we feeling? Thumbs up? Thumbs down? How'd it go? Thumbs in the middle? Woo! 
Very good. We got a lot of thumbs up this time. Very cool. That's cool. I always like doing Figment because he's he's uh, he's not super super simple like a like a Mickey or anyone, but he's he's not too complicated, um, you know, for for any newer or younger artists to follow along. So um, thank you all for coming today. Uh, before we head out, I just want to, with it being the last class, want to take a second to, if you guys will help me and join me in thanking. Um, Everyone who makes the Animation Academy possible, the techs and the, and the stage managers backstage. Uh, let's uh, give me a hand in uh, also thanking all of the cast members who make this possible. Thank you guys so much. And uh, now, before we, uh, before we go, and of course thank all of you guys for coming. You, of course, make this possible. I remember being a guest when I was young, and uh, this is one of my earliest memories of, of Disney, is coming to do the class when it was at Studios. So before we leave, I just want to take a little uh, selfie video and thank everyone for coming. Give me a round of applause here. Yeah. Uh, just for Figment, there he is. Figment to, to round off the Festival of the Arts here at the Animation Academy. So can everybody uh, hold up Hold up their figments. Let me see them. Here we go. Very cool. Look at all those beautiful figments. Now, uh, to close it out, let's, uh, uh, let's, we're going to say imagination because uh, in, in the ride, what the quote is, imagination is the key to unlocking all the hidden wonders of the universe. And if that is not the key takeaway from a Disney art class, uh, I don't know what it is. So, hold them all up. We'll say imagination on three. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you guys so much for coming. Hope you have a great time here at the Festival of the Arts and enjoy the rest of your day here. Friends, thank you for joining us for this presentation of the Animation Academy. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at the Epcot International Festival of the Arts.